So if you follow me on Instagram, then you may have caught wind that I am a bridesmaid in a wedding this year, actually next month, for one of my best friends. Her name is Sam. And there is going to be a makeup artist at the wedding, but it's optional whether or not you want to use her. I have had very hit or miss experiences using makeup artists. I even did my own makeup for my wedding just because I know what looks good on my face. Even though I would kind of consider my wedding makeup a bit dated now, it was very 2017 core. But regardless, I'm doing my own bridesmaid makeup. So I asked Sam what she wanted the makeup to look like, and these are the photos she sent me from Pinterest. Very classic neutral glam makeup, perfect for both wedding guests or the wedding party. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try to recreate this look with drugstore makeup. I don't know if this is gonna be the exact routine that I use for the wedding. I just wanna kinda get a feel for what works and what doesn't, and thought I would film it for y'all. So let's get into it, but first, if you're new here, hi, my name is Miranda. Welcome to my channel where we talk all things budget beauty. If that sounds interesting to you, then become the newest member of the Slashed Squad by hitting subscribe and the bell icon. So because this is a long wear makeup routine, I'm going to be doing my makeup in the morning with the girls and then it's got to last me all night. I am going to start out with my trusty e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. This is the niacinamide version. Now this is a water-based primer and I'm saying that because I typically don't wear primer with the foundation that I'm gonna use, but I'm hoping because it's water-based, it doesn't interact with it in a weird way. But this primer is just very trustworthy when it comes to all day, all night makeup. Let me zoom you in. I feel like you're really far away. Like we're, we're better friends than that. <laughs> Before I go into foundation though, I am going to spot conceal some of these dark and red spots using the Color Pop Pretty Fresh Concealer. This is a trick that I learned from Michaela on TikTok. It's called the sticky method of concealing. And basically you use a sticky primer, then you go in with concealer and then your foundation and you're just supposed to end up with a lot better coverage. Just dotting over some of these deeper spots that I know will probably show through a layer of foundation. And I'm just gonna pat them down a bit, like right over the spot. I'm not necessarily blending them, I'm just patting them so that they're a bit flatter. It's not just like a pile of concealer. <laughs> All right, it's been a few minutes and the concealer has dried down quite a bit. You can kind of see the border of where I applied it. I'm gonna use the Maybelline Superstay Skin Tint. I've been using this pretty exclusively since the video that I made, testing it, dripping in sweat. It just looks so beautiful and it really lasts all day, even if you are sweating. As I am blending this out, I realize that usually for special occasions, I start with the eyes. I just went on autopilot because on a daily basis, as you know, if you watch my videos, I start with my foundation usually, then go to the eyes and then come back for like contour blush highlight. Is that weird? Do people like just do face and then eyes or eyes and then face like in their entirety? Why do I jump around? I feel like it has to do with the tutorials that I was watching. Like as I was growing up and learning makeup, that's how people did their makeup. So that's how I started to do my makeup. It's kind of chaotic. <laughs> okay, so there's the coverage. I'm pretty happy with it. This one is still kind of showing through, but also I'm working on my skincare. So hopefully some of these dark spots will be a bit faded by the time of the wedding. All right, let's do brows. I'm gonna go in with my ColourPop brow pencil. Now I do have something to admit to y'all, usually for special events. I like using my Benefit pencil. It's just one of those products that works for me really, really well. I feel like most of my sweat originates in my brow area and the Benefit pencil holds up really well. I also really like the L'Oreal Brow Stylist. I think that that's the closest thing in terms of like a drugstore dupe. But I've been using this pencil a lot recently. I've been getting good wear with it. It's just one of those things you get so used to using the same product and you trust it so much that you're scared to like branch out. But this one's been performing really, really well, especially under humid conditions. I brought it to California recently. And when I tell you it was so freaking humid, I don't remember California being that humid when I lived there. <laughs> oh my God, it was miserable. But this actually did hold up during an all day wine tasting. I was not missing my brows at the end of the day. So I think I can trust it. Now I will say regardless of what pencil I use, I've been using the Physicians Formula Butter Brazilian Brow Lift Brow Gel. Could they have made a harder name to say? <laughs> I don't know if they claim 
for this to be waterproof or sweatproof, but I feel like it holds my brows in place no matter what. I like it because it's a thinner formula, but it actually holds my brows up and in place. I don't know how it does that without being like a thicker brow gel, but you don't end up with like that goopiness or the white cast that a lot of other really strong hold brow gels give you. All right, going in with my Milani eyeshadow primer. I feel like every time I talk about this primer, it gets so much hate, but it's still an old faithful of mine. So I was going back and forth on what eyeshadow to use for this look, and I landed on the ColourPop Smoke and Roses palette. There might be a better ColourPop palette for this in terms of a neutral, color story, but I feel like this has enough for me to work with, especially in like this range and over here. I'm probably not gonna be using the pinks, but this is the palette I had open. I feel like it's definitely usable to get this look. So the first thing I'm gonna do is dip into Attraction, which is this matte bone color, putting that all over the lid. And what this does is not only does it help set the primer a little bit for oilier lids, but it's also going to make all of the shades we put on top of it and layer blend a little easier. I feel like we've lost the art of the base shade. Okay, I think next I'm gonna go into Kickstart. It is a slightly mauve brown and that'll be my transition shade in and above my crease. Funny story, Sam actually asked me if I could do her makeup for the wedding. And I said, absolutely effing not. <laughs> I never claim to be a makeup artist. I know what looks good on me and I'm used to doing makeup on myself. Doing makeup on someone else is a whole different beast. I did make an exception one time with a friend and I did her wedding makeup. However, it was a very, very conservative wedding and she, didn't really wear makeup a lot to begin with. So the look that she wanted was extremely subtle. Okay, I'm gonna go into Spun Around, which is this rich chocolatey brown right here. So yeah, I really didn't do a lot with her. I added some very, very subtle shading on the eyes. I did do a like kitten winged liner, which was the hardest thing to do on somebody else. I remember at one point her dad came in and was like, oh Miranda, how are you? I haven't seen you in forever because we went to high school together. And I was trying to be polite and like keep up small talk. And she looked at her dad and she's like, dad, she's doing winged liner. You need to stop talking. <laughs> but it did come out really well. I, I was also able to practice on her like six times before the wedding. That was my that was my rule. I was like, if you are wanting me to do your makeup for your wedding, we're gonna practice every single weekend <laughs> until your wedding. But uh, yeah, this time around with Sam, I was like, no, because I wouldn't be able to practice on her considering we live in separate states. And I really just didn't wanna put that pressure on myself. <laughs> I do think my look is coming out a little bit more pink toned than the photo, so. Jury's out on whether I will stick with this eyeshadow palette. Yeah, in the pan, it didn't look as rosy. Against my skin tone, they're definitely translating rosy. I think I'm gonna go with Love Hurts, and I'm hoping that's not too white. Oh no, that is perfect. Just blending those edges together with whatever's left on my blending brush from earlier. Love hurts, but sometimes it's a good hurt. That's a song that exists, right? Okay, I don't think we are that bad or that far off. So I'm gonna go into One Love and that will be the inner corner highlight. And I'm just gonna put that slightly, slightly under my brow bone. Does anyone else feel like their eyes aren't the right shape for certain like makeup techniques? Cause I always feel like my inner corners, I don't know, they're like so, they're not close together, but because I have this creasing under my eye, I feel like a lot of inner corner stuff just doesn't end up looking right. And maybe I'm noticing it more as I age because my eye shape is definitely changing a little bit. But for some reason, inner corner highlight just always looks a little crowded is the word, I'm not sure. And I don't feel like I was ever able to master inner corner liner. Like for a while that inner corner wing or like pointing your tear duct was super, super in. And I just could never get it to work on me. So I don't know. I think that looks fine though. Okay, as far as the liner goes, I don't think I wanna do like a really sharp wing, but I do wanna do sort of like a soft smoky wing. I'm gonna start by using the Essence Stay and Play Gel Liner. First, I'm gonna tight line with it. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do a thin line on the upper waterline 
but toward the outer corner. Push it up just a tad into like the start of a wing. And then with my Sigma E06 brush, I'm gonna start blending and kind of winging it out just a little bit. This is my absolute favorite brush from Sigma because I've just never been able to find one similar to it that works as well at this size because it blends eyeliner really well without spreading it around. Look how small that is. Okay, so I've just done a little bit of a baby smoky wing. Now I'm gonna go into Whisper, which is actually kind of a gray. I'm gonna go over the liner and then blend that upward a little bit to smoke it out as well. And the reason I layer the two is because it just helps it last a bit longer. It's, there's something for the shadow to stick to as that base. Yeah, that looks so good. I just kind of want to smoke the top out just a bit more. Yeah, I like how that looks. Yay. How are you feeling about it so far? I'm not, I don't know. I'm on the fence. Let's add lashes. Cause sometimes, sometimes I can be totally on the fence about a look and then I add lashes and I'm like, oh, it came together. So before I go in with false lashes, I'm going to apply the e.l.f. Lash and Roll Mascara, another product that has become a go-to of mine because of how clean it looks. Zero clumps, lots of separation. I have loved this as an everyday mascara, but it also works really well before lashes because it doesn't add a ton of bulk. So because I am putting on lashes though, I'm gonna keep this coat pretty thin, but I am gonna focus on the inner corners because I'm only doing outer corner lashes. For my fake lashes, I'm using the Impress Press On Falsies. I reviewed these in my last YouTube video, and since then I've been wearing them so often. They are so easy to use, and I just think they look so clean because you don't have a whole band on your lid. I'm gonna go in and apply two on each eye. So easy. That's one. I just love not needing to mess with glue and they actually last. I mean, if you didn't watch that video, I would highly suggest it, but I slept in them and they were still totally secure. I recommended these to a friend who has mono lids and she wore them to a wedding and was so impressed. She said they lasted all night. She sent me photos. They still looked great after the wedding. So if they're wedding approved by my friend who like never wears fake lashes, she's not a big makeup girl anyway, then I definitely trust them. <laughs> I feel like we're more on point with the lashes. The magic of lashes, y'all. <laughs> I am gonna take a photo and send it to Sam to see if it's too rosy because if everybody else is just gonna be using like brown neutrals and I'm sitting out here with like rosy neutrals, I think it's gonna stand out just a bit. Is this too pink for wedding? and we will see what she says. But in the meantime, let's move on to the face. So for my contour, I'm gonna be using the Revolution Ultra Cream Bronzer. I have the shade Medium, which is actually pretty dark. And what I do with this, I'm gonna dot this on, and then just using my sponge that I applied my foundation, blend, blend, blend. Now this contour does dry down pretty quickly, so that's why I work one section at a time instead of like adding all my dots and then blending everything out. Uh, if I were to do that, I would have dots on my face at the end. Beautiful. Like, hello. I love this contour. I am gonna go ahead and contour my nose just at like the widest spot right here, just at the deviation. For my blush, I'm using the ColourPop Blush Sticks in the shade. Why is there no label? Literally, what shade is this? Oh. It's called 25-8 instead of 24-7. I just, I saw the numbers and I'm like, that's not a name. But see, it says 25-8. With this, I'm gonna go ahead and load it up on my finger and just press it into the skin. I find that I really like this method recently of cream blush. It just ends up a lot softer, even softer perhaps than using a stipple brush. And obviously you can be just a bit more deliberate with where you place it. I've actually been doing this a lot with travel makeup where I bring cream products that I can apply with my fingers so that I don't have to bring as many brushes. And it's been working out, let me tell you. I'm packing so much lighter now with my makeup routine, but I'm not skimping. Like I'm still getting a great look. It's not like I'm wearing no makeup makeup every day. You know what I mean? I also find with finger application of cream blush that you can kind of get more control as far as building up the color. Beautiful. 
And I'm gonna use the same technique with the ColourPop Light Sticks in Glazy. This has definitely been my go-to cream highlight recently. It is just the perfect like champagne-y gold. And again, I'm just gonna pat that in. I'm really trying to focus this right here toward the front of my cheekbone. I don't want it to be like a stripe. I want it to kind of fade out as it gets more toward my temple. And then I am gonna dot a little bit above the brow. Get some on my nose. Cupid's bow. Yeah, those ColourPop sticks, whether it's the bronzer stick, the blush stick, the highlight stick, I have really been digging them. All right, there's only one last step and that is lips. Now this is always kind of a tricky situation when it comes to wedding makeup or long wear makeup. You want something that is flattering, but something that's also going to last you a long time. You don't have to babysit it. You don't have to worry about it smudging. So for all of those reasons, I'm going to be using the Maybelline Superstay Vinyl Ink Liquid Lip Color. This is in the shade Punchy. Now this, you gotta shake to activate because once you put it on, it is budge proof, but you get this sort of like shiny finish. It's not glossy, but it's not flat matte. And I don't know, there's something in the formula you need to shake. Does that match my eyes? I think I didn't expect my eyes to be as rosy when I picked out this shade. Y'all tell me in the comments, does this lip color match the eye look? Cause I do have a more mauve shade in this formula, but I think that might be putting it way too overboard into the rosy theme that I wasn't going for in the first place. Okay, Sam has not responded yet. She's doing lawyer things. If it does end up being a little too pink for her vision, I would love recommendations on budget-friendly or drugstore eyeshadow palettes to get me closer to the brown neutral look. Oh, she responded. Ah, okay. I asked her, is this too pink for wedding? And she said, a wee bit, I think. Okay. Back to the drawing board. <laughs> I just need to get closer to brown neutral versus rosy. So let's hear your suggestions. <laughs> also, now that I have this look fully done and I'm assessing the situation, I'm a little on the fence about the skin tint and primer combo. I feel like the skin tint loses the natural appearance when it's over this primer. It looks thicker on my skin. It does not look as radiant. And like I said earlier, I usually wear this skin tint without any primer underneath and it lasts just as well as like your typical foundation with primer. So maybe I go primerless. That's scary for me for such like a special event that's highly photographed. <laughs> but everything else looks great. I mean, my skin looks hella smooth. All right, today's shout out goes to Catherine. Thanks for being a member of the Slashed Squad and join me over in this video next where I test these false lashes for 24 hours straight. I'll see you over there. Bye.